Did you know that stress sweat smells worse than regular sweat? Lume. Is it Lume? They also have Crystal, Native. All of those deodorants. If you know someone who works there, tell them to sponsor us. Because of psychic mediums, twin flames, and psychic comedians. It would just absolutely be hilarious. (laughs) I mean, we stress sweat all the time. Our sweat is... spoopy content. It's not During even spooktober. ever normal sweat. It's only stress sweat. And we just smell all the time. You're really just glad that you can only listen to us and watch us on the YouTubes and not actually be next to us. Because if you did be next to us, it would not be good for you. Plug your nose. Hi, this is Metapsychics. I'm Liv. This is M. M, say hi. What's up? And we're your Metapsychics! I don't know what we're going to say because I don't remember reacting to this video, but... If you guys know who Mackie and Amanda are, we fangirls because they contacted us in a YouTube comment asking if we would react to one of their newest videos, which is the Newland House. Yeah, it was very casual because we were very overwhelmed that day. If you can hear crinkling in the background, it's because I'm very stressed out. She's eating a kiss. A Hershey kiss. The Germans don't like Hershey's chocolate. Well, and by duh, the Germans, because Germans have good chocolate. I mean Max. <laughs> exactly. And if you're listening to this, Max. Let's start talking bad about you. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Vige so. Castilla. I don't remember what that one means. <laughs> I tell my dog to gee and vac, which I think or I was told means get out. Get out! For all the German people. Ich liebe dich. Anyways, what were we talking about? So I asked on YouTube <laughs> what content you guys want us to react to next. And that's where, um, I believe it was Amanda, responded and asked us if we would react to her Newland video. Newland house. New land. Mm -hmm. It's actually a family. It was wild. So before we actually started reacting to the video, we do this thing where we don't know anything about anything. And we're like, what do we feel? We put our medium hats on. And I like to call them our spidey senses. She almost just choked on her chocolate. I'm going to. (laughs) <laughs> you ever eat chocolate and then it like runs down the back of your throat and then you immediately need to die? Only when you're talking and eating at the same time? No, I have it even when I'm not talking. Mm, no. <laughs> Anyways. Never. Obviously, it's an old house. And I think that the souls... The house was from the 1800s. So, it, it it's it's been back there. It's seen sometimes. It's just like the uh, House of the Seven Gables. So if you check out our Salem video, we talk about the House of the Seven Gables. And that's where the kitchens are like open, open flame. Was the kitchen like that? I don't think it was. I don't don't know. I think the 1800s were a little bit better. Oh, was it? Yeah. 1600s is the one where you put the toast on the thing that looks like a brand. The Shadow Man Mansion was the one with the open, the open flame. Yeah. And that one was older than the Seven Gables. Yeah. This one's a little a little less a little vintage. More modern. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting though cuz we before we knew what it was. I mean, the title of the Newland it was a Newland house or a Newland manor. It says Newland house on their video. Okay, house. So, I mean, we immediately saw vintage people, which is great. Vintage I, uh, people. I can't wait until I'm old enough to be called vintage. I'm going to call you a vintage person. You're not going to be an old person. This is Liv. She's a vintage person. That's the most Leo thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I love it. Please only call me vintage, not old. Vintage person. Ugh, I'll take my dentures out and clack them at you and laugh. <laughs> I'll throw my, uh, my tennis balls on my... What are those things called? Your walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not going to have it because she needs them. She just wants the tennis balls to yeet at young children's heads. Yeah, and then it hides the fact that I'm going to do that. Well, it'll be funny when you get up and don't use the walker and walk away and the kid's on the floor like, ow. And you're just laughing. I'm like, got to go hide, kid, because they're going to yell at me. (laughs) They're going to put some sedatives in my pudding cup. (laughs) Got to make sure I look like I'm supposed to be here because I'm much older than you. I know how to discuss. Wow. So there was many people that we were seeing, and we saw that there was going to be, like, flashes of time frames, like a lot of different time streams at once, both residually and active. But the scariest thing that we got was this guy that I so horribly was not able to condense into one sort of visualization and then em's like this is what he looks like he's like the uh the crocker guy from the fairly odd parents mr crocker fairly odd parents yeah and if you haven't watched that show he's a very 
odd individual. He's very skinny, lanky. He's got a hunchback, dark hair, and these, like, spectacle glasses. It's like if Ichabod Crane had a love child with, like, Frankenstein and Nosferatu. It's like a weird threesome. But yeah, he's very twitchy. <laughs> to, sit, to put it in summary. But this guy, whoever he is, had a very sinister vibe. Like, super not okay. And it wasn't until the second portion of the video that the souls in the house gave us more information. And it's mostly the room in which Mackie and Amanda called, or is probably referred to as actually, the doll room, where we picked up on his energy. To the point where, when I was asking more information about it, because they both couldn't breathe, and I... I think you did. Did you feel like you couldn't breathe or were you fine? When I they walked know. into the My doll head room? hurt. It wasn't that I couldn't breathe. It was that he was showing me things in there. Mm. I felt like someone had a pillow or like a rag over my nose so where I couldn't get enough air in almost. Yeah. No, he made me feel like he did horrible things to people in there. And I don't know any of the history of this place. So maybe that's wrong. But also, I feel like this guy... His reputation was very positive because he was like this rich dude. So he made it seem like he was helping people. But there was this weird, like, not so good thing that he would do to people. Yeah. So we'll go back to the doll room in a second to talk about that more. But I think they mostly started in the kitchen and they did a lot of like EVP, spirit box, automatic writing E type things. It seems like Amanda likes automatic writing. It's like her thing. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm not sure how it works for her, but she like sits there with her pen and they she like gives them permission to kind of like touch it to like move things, like manipulate her. So she like scribbles and then figures out what the words within the scribbles. Interesting. It's really weird. That's cool. Wish I could automatic write. <laughs> I'm sorry. You said automatic write and it made me think of like a typewriter. Just uh -huh. like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so they were sitting in the dining room for most of the video and they were talking to a whole bunch of different set of souls, mostly these like little children. So I think the Newland family that they're we're talking about for the most part do not involve this like crocker guy this a uh, weird crocker man but they talked to the the lady of the house mrs newland and then mrs newland had a whole bunch of sons little boys we think that there were probably three of them but mm, amanda was also talking to this little girl that she described in the video as well yeah did you see the little girl with brown hair or blondish hair she had brown hair. <laughs> I saw a girl with blonde hair, and they're like, no, you didn't. You just assume okay. little girls look like Shirley Temple, so you're dumb. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure she just Was it curly, it though? I mean, it wasn't straight, but it wasn't curly. Okay. She had a very, like, playful sort of attitude and was answering a lot of questions. And at one point in the video, they're getting the spirit box things and it's like two children arguing and there was this little boy that was under the table too that the older girl was trying to get out and they were like you're dead which is hilarious because literally and figuratively <laughs> <laughs> oh it's just that's what i would say if i was a kid messing around with another spirit kid but yeah what's interesting with this house because it's so old there's multiple generations of souls that are associated with the building so Liv and I were seeing people from different timelines. So we were seeing residual things, but we were also seeing people from that time period kind of like laid over top of each other like an onion. It had layers. Like an ogre? Like an onion. Ogre. Onion. Onions are like ogres. <laughs> and in the morning, I'm making waffles. <laughs> I can't not. Mm -hmm. I love Shrek. Shrek is love. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. That was really hard for you to say. That's because I got chocolate in my cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> so the interesting thing about the two little kids that were playing under the table, or the girl and the boy, was that they were from different timelines. You want to explain that one? At Kroger, we work with local farms right in our own backyard to bring you food that's fresher than fresh. From homegrown watermelon that makes your mouth water to crisp corn picked right around the corner. 
Come pick out some yourself. Because shopping for local produce should be as easy as shopping at your local Kroger. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Get more ways to save at the buy five or more, save one dollar each sale. Just buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. It's said we make 35,000 decisions a day. No wonder they don't all come out just right. Like that time you ordered that round of liquid magma hot wings. Ouch. At Citizens, we can't help you decide what to order, but we can help you track your monthly restaurant spending with Citizens Insights on our app. So you can keep tabs on your budget right after icing down your tongue. Learn more at citizensbank.com slash you got this. Citizens, made ready. Member FDIC, wireless carrier text and or data charges may apply. So we talk about this a lot. Time is linear if you are within the stream of time. However, for spiritual beings, it is a different ride for them. And the best way I can describe this is using an analogy of a stream or a river. Us, as physical beings, we are in the stream of time, meaning we are following the current, which is why we view it as linear. But a spiritual being doesn't have a physical body, so they, de- they don't have the limitations of being within the current of time. They have the ability to step out of the river and jump back in at any moment in time. And time, as do rivers, they split off into many different directions, have turns, twists, all of these different things. And that's kind of how time works as a whole as well. So have you ever heard of the multiverse? It's kind of like that. So... With us seeing multiple timelines at once, these souls were in those times in a kind of residual space, but they also, because they're spiritual beings, have the ability to take a step out of the stream and then jump back into where Mackie and Amanda are talking to them with the spirit box. So that's why they're from different time periods, but they're able to be in the moment in which they're talking to them with the spirit box so they can be together, even though they are from different times. And the reason we're explaining that is because most people would assume that because a girl and a boy that are in spirit are playing with each other, as kids do, that they would be either a part of the same household or a part of the same, like, family time. But that's not the case. He might have been someone that lived there at a different time, which is cool. Or not at all. Maybe it was, like, a neighbor kid. He was like, hey, your parents. I don't know. Do you think it was uh, Mrs. Newland's boys? I feel like there were three of them. You felt like there were three of them and an extra one. <laughs> Yeah, the friend. Yeah. (laughs) The friend that was there. Yeah. We still, at this point, have not watched any of the history. We skipped the history part of the Mackie and Amanda video so that we wouldn't be swayed or have any bias towards information. Yeah, I'm not sure. There was just a lot of both active and residual hauntings going on at the same time, and I liked to explain it as when they were getting things in their spirit box and stuff like that. It's the way you can conceptualize or the way I see it in my mind's eye when I'm relating what I'm physically hearing to what I'm metaphysically seeing in my head, um, kind of like how you are able to visualize or some people are able to visualize things in their mind. It's like those scenes in a movie where like one person is standing still or moving slowly and then everything around them or the other things around them are going faster to where it's like blurry a little bit. That's kind of how I perceived this house the entire time. So Em and I were very confused a lot because we're like, there's a lot going on. It's like wearing three sets of 3D goggles. Yeah, because this place is super old. Yeah, it's really cool. That's kind of how the Hawthorne Hotel was too, a little bit. Not as much, but it was cool. The Hawthorne Hotel doesn't have the like generational splits like this house does with the different families, which is why it's different. Yes. I don't see the fuzzy sort of stuff that's going on in the background of like different times passing by at the Hawthorne Hotel. I do in this house though, which is why it makes it so much more confusing. So it was cool. They got a lot of fun stuff. They had a flashlight and there was a cat. (laughs) It was nice that they said something about the cat too because I was like, oh, they love cats. I feel like cats just like to spiritually troll things all the time because they can. It's a very cat thing to do. It was an orange cat. Yeah. And your theory on orange cats? Well, I think there was two cats. The orange one that was at the house hanging out with a little girl in the flashlight in some rooms. And then another cat that's passed and in heaven. And he's like, screw this. I don't have to go in there if I don't want to. But it's funny because your theory on orange cats, I think, explains why the orange cat is there. 
You should know by now what my theory about orange cats are, because orange cats are supposedly, especially the male ones, as extremely friendly. A.K.A. Liv is an orange cat. <laughs> A male you. orange cat, specifically. You think my old cat, Kitty, was an orange cat in his past life? He was very friendly. I think he was just, like, a literal <laughs> cherub. <laughs> he was a little angel? Yeah. Like the angel that I'm thinking of in the upper ring, and he's decided to become a cat. Why the frick not? One of our what old was bosses was an angel. Was she a cherub? Was, is a cherub. I don't remember what cherubin do. I think cherubs. You did the research. I just was there. That was a long time ago. I think they were in the, the, the center, the middle tier. No, I don't think he was, but I would like to say exactly. that he's a cherub. But he was so cute. He did this little thingy with his feetsies, and he really liked When I was at your house, we ate lunch meat together. He had really bad arthritis in his one shoulder, so he'd, like, gimp walk everywhere like he was walking to his own beat. Like, he was, like, a bad mamma jamma, like, going down the street, you know? Like, you needed a... With, like, a little leather jacket because of his strut. <laughs> Do you see him as, like... I don't know how to describe this. <laughs> Like, the guy that, like, helps people. Um, I'm watching The Sandman on Netflix right now. And you have The Sandman, which is obviously the god of dreams, right? And then you have his, like, librarian, which is, like, his assistant. I feel like Kitty's the assistant. To cherubs? To some light being. Because he's white and gold, and he has this buzzing sound. Maybe he just is white and gold. What did he help your know. family through that you don't remember? I don't know. He's my sister's cat. <laughs> I feel like he was supposed to help your family in some way, and the reason he didn't stay with your sister is because, just like with angels, once they're done helping you, they're like, I'm going to help the next person. Or it's because her husband's allergic to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's the physical understanding yeah. of it. That's like... Why? That's why it happened. An and then animal? they got two different cats. <laughs> okay, so it really wasn't that big of a deal, right? Oh, no, Kitty just doesn't lick himself. So he was very dandruffy. So if you were <laughs> allergic to cats, Kitty would have killed you. <laughs> Even with his arthritis, this dude could leap at least five feet, and I don't understand. It gave me high beads of anxiety, but we ate But he can't lick together. his butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, he looks like he ate a bowling ball. Well, he could not lick his butt. He had very bad dandruff. High, highly allergenic. <laughs> Ugh, may he rest in peace. R.I.P. Kitty. So. He was so, oh, if you got really close to him, you know the little turtle, the turtles from Finding Nemo where they like bump heads? Noggin, Finn, dude. You know what I'm saying? That's what he would do if you got close enough to him. He would just headbutt you and it actually would hurt, but it hurt in a good way because it was love. Mm -hmm. it's literally my favorite thing one of my favorite things about him but probably my most favorite thing is that he did the head bumps mm -hmm. every time solid never got tired of it back to the new one house <laughs> there was a kitty cat and then there was an orange cat that was in the house but the reason we think he haunts ish haunts the house decides to hang there mm -hmm. in a cool dude loose mood manner is because he's an orange cat and he's like hey I'm gonna get real belly rubs and spiritual belly rubs because you can't see me unless you try Unless you're Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was a good time. And then there was Mr. Crocker. So do you know anything about this baby that I was seeing before? They don't like to talk about the baby. What do you mean they? The spirits? Yeah. That's what you told me before. That's the only thing I remember from the first recording of this video. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember much from the first recording besides being very, very, like confused because there's so much going on that like metaphysically it's hard to pinpoint it it's kind of like a whole bunch of fish in a barrel and you're like oh god i can't pick one out it's really hard mm -hmm. and it's just like ones that are bigger you can see a little bit better but i don't remember the baby i remember mr crocker i know well, do you see a baby i said he wore Put like your medium ship pad on i know but i don't want to because it'll make me cry probably that's that's good content good content <laughs> no <laughs> Yeah, everybody hears me cry all the time. It's so stupid. They love it. And I only ugly the cry. Chicks dig it. And no one can see you. Well, birds aren't real, so don't tell me another fake fact. Just dig it. I don't know. When they were in the doll room and they felt like they couldn't breathe, and I also was experiencing that when they were in the doll room, so I'm glad you said something cuz I just thought it was normal for a second. What to not be able to breathe? I feel like I perceive a lot of metaphysical things and I just ignore them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Same. 
Uh huh. My spirit guides were like, you know how you have chronic pain? Do you really think that's all of your pain? Mm -mm. And that was the day I was like, well, shit. <laughs> well, I'm getting married in two weeks. So at the very end of the video, when they went outside to the barn and the souls in the house were showing me that weddings happen there all the time, I wasn't going to say anything. So I'm like, that's just my own egotistical brain because I just got done with a flower appointment with my florist. And then they went outside and like, this is what's built in the 70s and a lot of weddings are here. And I was like, no. Oh! They really like the weddings, like, a lot. Like, the people in the house. I feel like people got married at the house, but also the fact that there's the wedding venue that's separate next door also makes them very happy. But when they were in the doll room, um, yeah, I was trying to get information from the Crocker dude who, when you asked me if he's the reason or something why they couldn't breathe, I felt, I saw, like, the color green, like, the slime goosebumps green, which is not a good color. In association with things yeah well i asked you why they couldn't breathe in there and you told me that it was associated to a man and i told you was it this like crocker man and then that's when you told me about this green color because they show me this crocker man doing bad things in there <laughs> like i explained earlier he's like an evil scientist so well when i was trying to get more information mrs newland herself because her bedroom was next door walked in and literally looked at me and was like we don't talk about that yeah and that's when i was like oh no yeah i don't like it they explained to me that it's like um that new batman movie that came out with edward cullen mm -hmm. <laughs> they explained in the movie that ed that sorry i want to call him edward because of twilight <laughs> edward batman his parents batman. died and his parents were very well off obviously he they're rich and there was this big perception that they helped a whole bunch of people in the city but they had all of these darker undertones of doing really awful things because because they're rich and can so that's what they were telling me with this mr crocker type of dude we don't know what his name is he's probably one of the newland people i'm not entirely sure no he's not why no. is he in the house i think he might have owned it maybe before the newlands or something or I want to say before but yeah but it made me uncomfortable because I was like did you do weird things to people in here because earlier I was feeling this woman that was sick and she had like an IV in her arm she I don't know that the they tuberculosis were tuberculosis room yeah <laughs> I don't know if they were related or not but that's what they were using to describe to me that people were sick and they came here and this man came here and he did things and they were bad things i can explain it yeah okay because it's actually kind of normal in like a sane asylum or asylum type things in the his like in the past like 30s 40s to even the 60s kind of but it's more early turn of the century 1900s what but are you talking about <laughs> what kind of person he was oh okay so there's a room that was the tuberculosis room and in the left hand bed when you're opening the room there was like an old woman in there i think she was a part of the newland family yeah because there was an old was. man sitting in the chair because amanda was like i feel like someone's here it was the old man who was probably the husband of that woman who was sick and dying with something that em could perceive with the iv in her arm and when they went into the doll room and Mrs. Newland was like, we don't talk about him. He may have been related to the family, like a Newland. However, the reason they tell me no if he is related is because <clears throat> they might have found out what he did and mm -hmm. they don't consider him a part of the family. Oh. Yes. Of Got like, you. we don't like him so much that we don't associate ourselves with him. You said that he was some sort of doctor or had like the knowledge of a doctor yeah but so not necessarily medical i'm doing this for my job type deal yeah he might have gone to school for like science or things like that mm -hmm. because the way they describe him to me in conjunction with how you're perceiving stuff is in the like institutions and asylums of early america a lot of people would even the tuberculosis like wards like big giant places where people go for the rest of their lives because if you get tb you can't come back to society and the nurses that worked in TB asylums could never come back to society. So yeah. when you worked there, you lived and died there. That's it. But unfortunately, in America's history, there was a lot of people that were psychiatrists, psychiatric professionals, and other doctors that worked in these types of asylums 
And what they would do is horrific things to the people that were never going to come back. Either because they were deemed insane, unfit for society for whatever reason, had TB or any other sort of terminal illness. And when they did do experiments on them to quote unquote cure them, it really wasn't for curing at all. They just were Mm -hmm. absolute evil scientist monsters from a different dimension of hell. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you feel like this place actually, was they had someone that had TB, then why were they there? Well, I'm just saying, I'm g- using that as a reference oh, okay. to describe what this man was like. He may have lived in this house by himself alone and had some sort of position or understanding of himself within society that was normal. However, I was trying to get information about him, and when Mrs. Newland shut it down, this man with white hair came forward in a white mustache, kind of like the butler from Batman, mm-hmm. and was like, they don't talk about him for this, this, and that reason, and M is on to what his shenanigans were. And uh, what he would do is, since he had the title of doctor or whatever, whether he was a medical doctor or not, when you were educated back then people thought you were super smart so they would entrust their faith into you to do certain things so i feel like what he did similar to the early american asylums would take on choice cases from people in the community or the surrounding area and their families would pay him money to quote unquote cure them but very similar to the asylums he wouldn't actually try to cure them maybe he might have in the beginning but he probably figured out that he liked killing people more. Got you. And that's what he did. And when his patients weren't quote unquote cured or never got better, it's not like the families that gave them to him could do anything. Got you. Because they died. They were going to die anyways. They just didn't know that they were entrusting the well-being and what is it called? Um, oh, what is the word? I can't remember it quality of life of their family member to a monster he's a monster so that's why it's not very good and i don't know what's about the baby but it bothers me and i don't like it because when you talk about the baby i feel like someone has things over my face so i don't know if they suffocated something that's when i started asking you about the baby yeah so (laughs) it bothers me Mm -hmm. i don't know what Maybe it's... Yeah, because I feel like someone got sick and then they had some sort of, like, terminal thing and someone just, like, finished the job. So... Which is why it was uncomfortable in the video because I was like, I don't want to say that. I don't know if that's real. I don't want that to be real. Well, yeah. We don't want it to be real and we don't know if it is, but that's what we get from the Mr. Crocker man and he's not a nice dude. So Wikipedia says that this house was one of the first houses built in the area. So it was a farmhouse... And it had acres and acres and acres of, like, farmland. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's also, the house was built on the site of Native American settlement. So, there's all, that's what they were talking about in the video as well. Of all the Native American things in, like, art pieces that Mrs. Newland had? Maybe. That's what they described them as. Well, the land itself is Native American settlement land. I mean, that's just all of America, but I get it. Yeah, but I don't know. They specifically say it in regards to the Newland house. It mm-hmm. was built on a settlement of the Native Americans. Hmm. Hmm. This is also during the Civil War. Sorry, I'm on a Wikipedia page. Oh. <laughs> William Newland was 11 years of age when his father, John Newland, enlisted for service in the Civil War in 1962. His father was killed in, in 1862. Yeah, sorry, 1862. <laughs> I was like, 1962 is like. Can you tell him dyslexia? Voice. <laughs> <laughs> dyslexia. His mother died in 1869, leaving him orphaned at age 19. You're an adult. I guess that still is an orphan, even if you're an adult. I always just associate orphans as children. When your parents die, you're just like, oh, I guess I'm here now. I wouldn't consider my mother an orphan, you know? Right. That makes sense. And then William Newland died of a heart attack in his ranch, 1933, at age 83. Did he live in Texas? Um, I think this place is in California. Hmm. I saw like a deserty type thing, so. <laughs> yeah, California. <laughs> ah, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I don't know that you know what Texas looks like. Nope, never been to Texas. 
Well, okay. Texas is very large. Yeah. So the parts that I've been to, like Dallas, it's pretty green. Doesn't look much different to like where we're at now. There's wow. lots of trees, it's green. There's grass. If you go to like uh Arizona, everything's orange. That's cool. Arizona is cool. Mm. The sand is orange. I talked to a cactus in Arizona. <laughs> he was like really it's funny. Orange sand. <laughs> yeah, there's also a Native American woman there too. She was also very nice. Interesting. Mm. It was for a house reading. I talked to her cactus too. He's very, very funny. Extremely funny. Was- you were also talking about some man that pulled up in, in a horse carriage. Yeah. They were, it was because it was pertinent to the spirit box things. Yeah. And then you were talking to some woman that uh, looked like she was in her 30s that was a little bit off put that Amanda was a medium. So oh, she oh, was oh. like, this is of the devil. No, no, no. The lady in her 30s was the one that walked oh. in and she was like, oh, you're the mediums. Because the little boys were telling her, I feel like she was the mom or Mrs. Newland maybe when she was younger or, yeah, when she was younger maybe. Mm-hmm. And then I'm asking her how she's able to do that because we talked to old Mrs. Newland who was like, we don't talk about him here. And then that perception of her is just when she was younger. But that's weird to my yeah, brain. Yeah, places like this confuse the hell out of me because they'll show themselves young, old, in mm-hmm. between because you're seeing all of the timelines at once and different souls that are associated to that younger version of the soul itself. Yeah, but when the spirit box in that scenario said devil, it was an older woman mm-hmm. with like gray and white ah. hair and she was like, it wasn't that the devil was there, which is what most paranormal investigators, I feel, say when they're on an investigation. They're like, oh, the devil's here. And it's like, no, no, no. Old Ethel over there thinks that you guys, because of her religious beliefs, are of the devil. Because mediums are not supposed to do that. That's like, mediums aren't things. They're like talking to demons or yeah, whatever. Mediums talk to demons. <laughs> yeah. So the old lady said that. It's not that there was a devil there. Oh, I'm going to get a Charlie horse. No. You gotta bend your foot the other direction. Stop it! Well, that's dramatic. No, the first time I had a Charlie horse, I think I thought I was dying. I was in bed, woke up in the middle of the night, and my entire legs were like shooting on fire. I almost like that's probably the closest thing that I've had to like almost. At, at, like thinking the end was near ever. You put a skewer in your hand. That was m- easier. Through your hand. I would rather put another meat thermometer through my hand <laughs> than get a Charlie horse. Dramatic. It's not dramatic. <laughs> I thought I was dying. I need a, I need a banana who has potassium. You got any potassium? No, we're out of bananas. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It? No. That's the chemical <laughs> word for potassium. <laughs> I, I like how you explained it. <laughs> okay, I think it's subsided. It didn't it didn't reach full velocity. I'm okay. Well, I don't know what we we're talking about. So. If anybody's listening named Charlie, go get your horses. Stop telling them to bother my feet. Okay. I was talking about the lady who's like, it's the devil. Yeah. Because there's two mediums were there, which I, I think is literally the there's most There's one medium. Mackie's not a medium? No, she hasn't said that she is. I thought you told me the other day that Mackie's also a medium. No, that's why uh, when you couldn't figure out what their names were, I was like, Amanda's the medium. Oh, I thought they both were in your explanation of things. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, we talked about we talked about Mackie's spirit guide. At Amazon, we value unique skills and qualities on the job. We are currently hiring people of all abilities for a variety of hourly roles in our warehouses. We can offer a wide range of hiring accommodations, resources, and support from the application process to the first day on the job and beyond. You don't even need to interview to get a great job offer. So apply now and join a supportive community today. Visit amazon.com slash PWD jobs. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. You're like, there's yeah. multiple of them. There's one that's orange, there's one that's red. And I was like, oh, the red one. Talk about the red one, because that's the one that I see. Because she was getting, like, lost in the sauce during the, the, the what is it, spirit box? Well, they were talking about how Mackie kind of, like, goes into a trance when she's in using the spirit box. Like, she feels different. So that's when Liv paused it and was like, do you see Mackie's spirit guide? 
And I was like, is it the red one that you're talking to or the orange one? A big old red rock <laughs> because monster. both of them help her when she's using a spirit box. The one that is the red one, red has a lower frequency. And he... Oh. Yeah. I wouldn't put that together. I thought he looked like the guy from Looney Tunes. Like the big red monster with the giant sneakers that grabs Bugs Bunny. He's like, I'm going to love him and pet him and feed him forever. He's a rock monster. And he helps with... He wants me to say stabilizing frequencies because I was like lowering frequencies doesn't necessarily help you uh, hear things because we help we think that the spirit guide helps her hear different things within the spirit box itself. Like she will hear things that other people don't hear because it's like hearing frequencies in between the frequencies of the spirit box itself, which is interesting. So he specifically this low frequency red color is helping her find the lower frequencies within the spirit box. Her orange spirit guide helps her with like putting the things together. So she hears them and then the orange spirit guide helps process the information. Does he work with clairsentience too? Mm Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry. It's because I saw yellow with him too and I was like, wait, M said you're orange. And then he's like, what does yellow mean for M? And I was like, I hate you. Emotional (laughs) intelligence. Clairsentience. Mm -hmm. Because they were experiencing for the first time, or at least it seemed like it, like it doesn't happen often, the same feeling from Mrs. Newland, um, supposedly that, like, not supposedly that you felt it, but just like Mrs. Newland, that there was like a lower pain that went down into her hip and leg. And Em and I were like, we feel each other's pain all the time. It's fine. (laughs) I'm glad you guys could experience that too. Bonding. Yeah, the clear sentience. And if you don't know, that's like, clear feeling and clear understanding people's emotion type deals. So with clairsentience, he's explaining that the reason why he's able to help you process things is through clairsentience. So if you feel a certain way, it validates the information that you're hearing. Mm -hmm. It's the accessory information to validate your clair perceptions. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've talked about Sorry. Yeah, I know you're talking to him. No, we've talked to... What, is there something scary behind me? No, we've talked to Amanda's spirit guide, which is that woman that has, like, clouds, that puts clouds around her. Mm -hmm. There's another woman with her now. In addition to her young girl that is her spiritual guide? Yes. Okay. She's purple energy, because I feel like the one that puts clouds around her is pink and gold. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The uh, one that is the one that has the purple energy. Does she have dark hair? Yeah. She has a lower purple frequency because I think it's interesting because purple is supposed to be high, fre- high, fre- have a higher frequency. English but is hard. It, when you, the way you make purple is you take red and blue. Blue is high frequency and red is low frequency. So it's understanding both of those frequencies in order to get spiritual or psychic information which is why purple is psychic information she says she's gonna help her with movement like forward movement because she's been trying to like <gasps> develop no. her me- what okay wait do you see this guy with the uh you see the the purple guide you're talking about right mm-hmm. and she has like long brown hair yeah and it's straight yeah that's how i see her spiritual guide who's younger I don't think she knows about the spirit guide spirit guide, but she knows about the spiritual guide and the spiritual guide is a shortened version of herself because she's pushing her mediumship. Yeah, because that's why she showed up because when I was about to mention uh, Amanda's cloud spirit guide, because I was like, if we're talking about Mackie's spirit guide, we should talk about things that we've already said about Amanda. (laughs) (laughs) Intermittently. And that's when I got an intrusive thought of a purple spirit guide because I was like, I don't remember her cloud spirit guide being purple i remember her being pink and gold but purple is very much driven towards psychic like mental information so that's what she's specifically helping amanda with is like helping her change and understand her frequencies so that she is able to communicate better because she's trying to develop her uh her mediumship more lately Yes, and it was funny because they told them not to use the spirit boxes, and it's not because they didn't want them to use the spirit boxes. It's because, Amanda, if you're a medium, like Em and I, you are the divination tool, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the fucking crowd. Welcome to the club. You are the spirit box. Welcome to all the pressure. So she kind of doesn't look like this, but for whatever reason, she makes me want to say that 
the way that the her new spirit guide and then this younger girl may or may not look like or the younger version of herself because you see people in their 30s because it's easier for you right i see people i don't know you gave me a complex about it the other day so i see people because they're older because that's more comforting to me i think older people knowledge wisdom not very scary younger people a little more scary like you might tell me that i don't it smell good or that i am a duty head you know stress sweating yeah you might bully this would be a perfect place for our sponsor deodorant (laughs) deodorant deodorant um but for her maybe kids aren't as you know scary which is why her spirit guide is like this is the extension of myself that you'll listen to but a kid in that yeah she said that she has another like kid a person because that's when the energy changes she's kind of like sassy and straightforward and like She's like, Victoria. Victoria mm-hmm. bullies me too, but she mm-hmm. decides to be whatever about it and it's fine, whatever. It's it's fine, it's fine. But um, th- she makes me want to say that the kind of, but not exactly how she looks, is the one character from The Magicians. I can't remember what her name is, um, but she's the best friend of the main character and they tell her that she's not a magician, but she oh, is a magician. Yeah, she looks like that. Yes, <laughs> with the straight hair, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. What is her name? I have she to- She has that th- energy too. She Very does. Calm. Yeah, but also I might murder you, but it'll be for a good reason. Well, yeah. She yeah. would have resting bitch face if you uh, could see her. That's just what she wants me to say of what she looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what she looks like. Because it'll be more relatable than just this girl that looks like this. Yeah, she's a spiritual being. Julia, that's her name. Mm-hmm. So, hopefully this resonates with you if you're listening to this, Amanda. If not, I'm sorry our friendship could have been something beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. You got anything else to say? You still want to talk about the baby doll room? Because it was really not fun. I don't know. Do we talk to all? Do we talk about all the things that we did in that that reaction video? There was kids. Oh, the boys used the knocks in the house. There was a lot of knocking to lead in this them house. Around the house. Well, to lead them, but also I feel like when the boys were alive, and that's how they would communicate oh, yeah. with each other when they were in trouble. Like if one boy was upstairs and the other one was downstairs because they were in timeout or whatever, they would like knock on one wall and they knew the boy would hear it and then he would respond. It was like their Morris code. Yeah, because the house is really old, so it amplifies all of the sounds. And they were really just trolling all of you with the knocks and stuff. And then outside, there was a little boy in the flower garden. And I think that was, I don't know if it was before or after they talked about the um, Native American art in the house. But the, I don't know. They went to the barn and they talked about the land being Native American settlement land. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, but I'm talking about the little boy that was in the garden that was throwing yeah, rocks at them. I know. But in when we were watching that, that film and mm-hmm. I saw him in the garden throwing rocks at them, like mm-hmm. a little kid being a little kid because he thought it was funny, he made me want to say that he was playing cowboys and Indians. But I don't want people to be offended that I'm saying cowboys and Indians, which was a game as a child. Yeah. You got anything else to say? I don't think so. If you guys want us to react to a Mackie and Amanda again... Let us know somewhere. Also, let us know which video we should react to. Mackie and Amanda, if you have any other suggestions of videos we should react to on your channel, we would love to do it because we think you guys are really cool and the content that you create is awesome. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, you have hopefully questions. in the future we could meet, do some crazy investigation. Ugh. We'll see how it goes. I want to go to a pretty castle where we talk to people that are like Mrs. Teapot from Beauty and the Beast. And they're dresses take up the entire room yeah yeah sounds like a good time so if you guys have not realized it's october which means wait i think it's next week which one is it say it again it's spooktober there you go which I think, okay, I'm thinking because this comes out on a Sunday because we're pre-recording this. I think in the next few days, we're going to be doing a live stream at a location doing a ghost hunt. Is Patreon going to get a, a, a tip off of where where we're going to no, be? No, no one's going to know until the live stream itself. How are they going to know? No one's going to know. How They're going to they know, know when we're live. So don't miss that. It's going to be on October 23rd or 24th, depending on what time of the day we're going to do it, because we're going to do it early in the morning. Maybe like 3 a.m. Maybe not. I don't know. It depends on how long everything 
works and if all of my internet stuff work, but we're really excited because this is going to be launching of our spoopy stream. So we want to start doing live streams once a week on Thursday, and I think it's going to be on YouTube that we're going to do our live streams, but I have someone from our ghost team that's going to be doing live streams with me, M. Her name is Janelle. And hopefully Liv will guest star, but Liv has a lot of readings. So. <laughs> Until next year. <laughs> Until March. So in the future, we're going to be having more live streams, but right now we're going to do it every Thursday. And it's going to be dependent on if I have readings, if it's going to happen at night or in, during the day. But well, make sure you show up at, to our launch because that's going to be super exciting. Yeah, we're going to be a very spoopy place. It's going to be very cold. But it's going to be so pretty. I'm going to be so cold. So pretty. We got one more dad joke for you guys. We would appreciate it if you would leave us an Apple podcast review because it really helps our channel. And if you can't leave a review on whatever app it is that you are listening to, that's okay. But if you could leave a review or send us a review or a dad joke in an email, not a review, a dad joke, if you can't leave a review, we would appreciate it. Or any sort of thing that you found funny what is it called? In the podcast. I don't know. I'm like blanking. <laughs> Two weeks until marriage. Gonna die. So I have a dad joke for you from Kristen or Crystal. And it's Names a good are hard one. For her. Well, it, they couldn't put it in Apple oh, Podcasts because uh, uh, uh. I don't listen to po Apple Podcasts. They listen yeah. on Spotify. So the yeah. email literally said dad joke from Spotify. Yeah. And it's great. She gave me two. So thank you very much. And the dad joke is what do you call a cow with no legs? I'm giving it to you telepathically. A bun. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was showing you something that might give you a thing, and that was a part of it. A cow pie. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All I can see is bread. <laughs> With I mean, a mustache, specifically. <laughs> I was going to say, let's be real. If you're in the Discord server, and there's an entire conversation of metaphysical girls about bread leading to the creation of an emoji specifically for the love of carbs. Yeah, I don't think your, tele your telepathy is going to outweigh my intrusive thoughts about bread with mustaches. So <laughs> what is the answer? So what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. That's rude. It's a little dark. It's a little dark. Kristen's got a dark sense of humor, but this is a metaphysical- a vegetarian or something. I saw you eat a meatball once. Shh. Don't tell my mom. She it likes to tell people. It surprised me. Well, yeah, I don't tell people that I eat meat because then we don't have the conversation that I don't eat meat. Like when you I went to my- You want to have the conversation about it? No, I don't. I want to be- I don't eat meat. Let's never talk about this again. I'm just offended <laughs> because I don't know what I need to do to make a meatball that you'll like. You can't. What do you mean? Because it's too much pressure for me to eat one. Why? I have a lot of food trauma. <laughs> and if you have a lot of food trauma, I'm sorry. <laughs> On top of spaghetti, all covered in sauce, is M's childhood trauma that likes to roll off in the form of meatballs. Well, okay. If you want to make <laughs> me a meatball that I'll eat, go talk to my mom and she'll tell you how to do it. Can I just make I eat my mom's meatballs? What if I eat? make an entire meatloaf no I've, just, I've never eaten a meatloaf before in my life it's just a larger meatball it's Doesn't like the matter. jawbreaker that i got you <laughs> yeah my mother used to tell me that and i was like can't do it sorry i'm making meatloaf this it needs to be the same because i'm week. autistic it also can't be mushy because i'm autistic it also needs to be covered in something else because i really hate the taste of meat what about a cloche i don't know what that is it's the thing that you put on top of the food to make a dramatic reveal uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's like the plate lid. The, the lid. lid. The lid. The lid. The lid. <laughs> God. Okay. Thank you to our patrons because without you and all of your lovely, all, all of our lovely listeners, viewers, subscribers, podcast extraordinaires, if we wouldn't we get be to able so to do many, this. If we get to 400, Liv will stop saying your name at the end. I don't know if I can do that though. We cannot like <laughs> say a thousand people on this channel. It really was six minutes. I edited it for uh -huh, some, uh -huh. six minutes of If names. we get to 400, we'll stop saying your name at the end. Okay. But here is a replay of Liv saying your names from earlier. <laughs> so, JD, Sarah, Todd, Kaylee, Eureka, Mia, Isabel, Jeremy's random life. Alex, Emily, Azale, Bethann, Bethann, Fair Pena. I think that's how you say that. I'm very bad at Spanish. I'm sorry. What is that? How do you say sorry in Spanish? 
I can only think about it in Japanese. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Gome. Um, Maria, Haley, Idhara, Faith, Alex, Alex, Caitlin, Argelia, Sasuke, Magician. Well, there's two of you. We're going to make you fight to 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 the prize. Ciara, Lori, Mercedes, Christine, Terry, Christina, Sky, Marie, Pierre. Oh, what's up, girl? I had a reading with Marie. She's very lovely. Sheba, Calloway, Elise, Stephanie, Jay, Kiana, Tiger Lily, Chloe, Natalia, Michelle, Mia, Joshua, Miranda, Veronica, Parker, Jennifer, Lauren, Little Universe, Shun, Esther, Brianna, Salvador, Hannah, Alexis, Natasha, Tiana, Calla, Kate, Cat, Cat, Sydney, Kate, mm. Ashley, Anna, Paisley, Paula, Sharon, Melissa, Raggle, Maggie, Deanna, Tuesday, Sarah, thanks Sarah, Sarah, Cole, Mama Lama, Shama Lama, Ding Dong, Danielle, Susie, what's up Danielle, Lisa, Charlotte, Logan, Megan, Allie, Danielle, Jason, Practical Sapphic, Samantha, Janus, I think it's J, Jai, J, J, we're gonna say J, I think that's your last name, I don't know, maybe you're trying to do Janice, but in a cool way. Angelina, Emily, Kathy, Ashley, Veronica, Eureka, Reek, Reek, Hitch, Hitch, Wreck, Wreck. I think it's Wreck. Baby Chim Chim, Gibby, TMQ, 927, Danielle, Lexi, Petra, Sinji, J, Pamela, Lucas, the spider fanatic. Every time I see a spider now, Lucas, I feel like I need to stop, find my phone, and take a picture of it and put it in the pet section of the Discord server, but I don't because I have anxiety about posting all the time because my mom was like, don't be on your phone all the time, but now it's like a part of my job and I really struggle with that. Jasmine, Emily, Lola, or Lolo, Cora, Keely, Lacey, Jinter, Ashley, Lanita, Kara, Sandrine, Kiara, or Kira, Jennifer, Paige, Maggie, Rena, Samantha, Clarissa, Laura, Charlie, Brittany, Miss Miss Alice, Nelson, Sarah, Ashley, Sarah, Angie, Julie, Colleen, Synth, Sherry, Hannah, Ryan, Amy, Raquel, Tasha, V, Fanny, JCLO, Shelly, Grisha, Jay, Jasmine, Julie, Brittany, Paige, Marin, Christina, Christopher, Sarah, Connor, Alicia, Vanna, Amber, Satili, Joylin, Paige, Brooklyn, Courtney, Rita, Alana, Abril, Aki, Kari- Karina, Sergio, Katya, Asteria, Jade, Gaymeyer, Book, Lee, MM, Kayla, Ashley, Dallas, Sarah, Alas, Alyssa, Gannon, Veronica, Cynthia, Chris Von Kleist, Emily, Meredith, Jim, Lindsay, Beth, Ashley, Annalie, Tara, Brandy, Hazel, Marcy, Rosera, Megan, Faith, Jessica, Yasi, Glow, Francesca, Amba, Brooke, Ellie, Maya, Flavende, Leanne, Ocarona, Liliana, Anya, Abby, Kayla, Sarah, April, Cassie, Joanne, Charlie, Keisha, Helen, Natalie, Alex, Sarah, Amanda, Tuna, Izzy, Super Aru, Alexa, Caitlin, Gotkatsky, Sophia, Bria, Katie, Leanne, Bess, Brittany, Kendall, Shandy, Riley, Nakia, Okatsuama, Otakusama, Otakusama, you probably get excited or like annoyed every time you hear our, us say your name differently every time. And by us, I mean me. At least it's not Korean anymore. Sorry. <laughs> Otaku-sama, Riker, Lillian, Jay, Lucretia, Brianna, Kristen, Kima, Samantha, Erica, Ian, Vanessa, McKenna, Cindy, Kylie, Mev, Trinity, Anthony, Violet, Peyton, Mac, Jenny, Laura, Bradley, Laurel, Bradley, Sandy, Nas, Sherry, Sushi, Charles, Holly, Abby, Malake. Long pause to put this in. <laughs> That we don't need. Yeah. There's a lot of long pauses. The power in this. of editing. Wow. All right. <laughs> and we're your meta sidekicks. Make sure to see our live soon. Fairy godparents. Oh, I think Vigatus dear means how are you? I've been thinking this whole time what it means. Fairy godparents. Oh, I missed it. Are you ready? Amazon Warehouse Hiring Day is coming on October 26th. Amazon will host live hiring events in your city to showcase all the reasons why this Amazon Warehouse is the place to work. Things like competitive pay, great benefits, and so much more. Drop in for some swag, bring a friend, and you could even walk away with a job. To find an Amazon Warehouse Hiring Day event close to you, visit Amazon.com slash Hiring Day. That's Amazon.com slash Hiring Day. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. Tired of long waits and rushed care at the ER and urgent care clinic? 
Next time, stay home and let Dispatch Health bring the power of the hospital to you. I call Dispatch Health. A care team of medical professionals actually come to your house. They're the same caliber of people that you would see if you were at a hospital or an urgent care. Dispatch Health can treat most non-life-threatening emergencies. They can do the x-rays, they can do stitches, urinary tract infections, blood tests, urinalysis, ultrasound. It's almost everything that they can do at the ER. You never feel rushed. They're there for you and only you. I felt like their only patient. And it costs no more than a trip to urgent care because Dispatch Health is covered by most insurance, including Medicare. See if we serve your home at DispatchHealth.com. Dispatch Health really went above and beyond. It's wonderful to have care come to your home. House calls are back and they're better than ever. Learn more at DispatchHealth.com.